Auction rooms are busy old places. I've been to plenty where it's just standing room only. Yes, it's quite a theatrical experience to see bidders battling it out to win their lot. Yes, yeah, so who was successful on today's show and what did they buy? Let's find out. There are some good basics with this three-bed semi in Stafford. Nice big window at the front and a door going out to the back garden. Lucy's step count is increasing at this two-bed mid-terrace in Gillingham, Kent. But again, it's two big steps down, just like it was coming through the front door. This three-bed semi in Sheffield, South Yorkshire, has a dangerous garden feature. We can look at All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid when they went under the hammer. Sold on the phone. Time to head to the West Midlands now and the town of Stafford. As far back as 1476, Stafford has been well known for its shoe manufacturing. But with that in the past, today it offers great potential for investment, thanks to great rail links into London. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Well, unfortunately, my boots were not made in Stafford, but they were definitely made for walking. And it's a good job, too, because here in Moss Pit, where we find our property, it's about a half an hour walk to the town centre. This is a three-bedroom, semi-detached house with a guide price of £105,000. I'm going to have a look around, see what it's got to offer. It looks a big house from the outside, a little shabby, I'll admit, but I have high hopes. OK, nice, decent-sized hallway. There is a porch just there, and this is the second door getting into the property. Solid door, good for security. You've got your stairs going up to your bedrooms, and across this hallway, you've got two decent-sized reception rooms connected with double doors. Nice big window at the front and a door going out to the back garden. To my left, over the hallway, into a really sort of big, decent-sized kitchen. You would have to start again in here, put something new in here, freshen it up a bit, it does look a little bit tired. And in here, we have got a wet room, and it looks like it's been converted for assisted living. Uh, maybe you could maybe find a better use for that. If the kitchen is here, I'm thinking to myself, maybe a utility room, maybe? And another door. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not the door I came in. Uh, maybe that was a coal store or something, but there's doors everywhere. Let's check out upstairs. This place is tired and dated, but it has great proportions. It's crying out to be modernised and brought into the 21st century. You've got the foundations here for a lovely family home. OK, upstairs we have got three bedrooms and a bathroom as well. Now, that would need a, a new bathroom suite in here. It's a good size, though, but you also seem to have this void space as well. You can always make it just that little bit bigger, maybe increase the space of that family bathroom. Three bedrooms all seem to be of a decent size, and this seems to be the master bedroom. Now, in terms of profit, this house has got a guide price, which I think is kind of borderline. It's up for £105,000. Now, I know a house in the area recently sold for £123,000. Now, I think you'd have to spend maybe eight, ten thousand £10,000 on this house just to get it right, and that takes your costs to maybe £113,000, £115,000. That's if you got it at the guide price. Now, I think if you're taking on a project like this, especially this one, you would have to watch your budget. The downside to being spacious is that it impacts on the budget. Bigger rooms equal more materials. There's a fairly big kitchen and possibly utility room to fit out. So be wary of your budget running away with you, especially when it comes to planting a garden of this size. But once tidied up, it would be ideal for a family with young children. So out at the front of the house, just wanted to look at the off-street parking situation. 
The curb's already been dropped, and you've got space here for one car. If you're lucky enough to have more than one car, you've got all this space. You could quite easily transform this into a bigger driveway, two cars or maybe even three. What I would suggest is speaking to your local council, get some advice, get some permission, find out what you can and can't do. But one thing it would do, it would increase this house's appeal, that's for sure. Do remember that you have to comply with regulations to help minimise potential flooding, intrusiveness and visual impact. As I said, talk to your council first. What does a local agent think of this house that was guided at £105,000? I believe the cost of this refurbishment would be in the region of £10,000 to make this into a lovely family home. In addition to this, I believe that due to the guide price, it would attract first-time buyers. So there should be plenty of interest in this house, but what type of value would the agent place on this house once the renovations are complete? Once renovated, I believe that this property could achieve a sale value of £150,000 on the open market and rental of between £650 and £675 per calendar month. I do like this house. It has got a bit of a strange configuration, but there's a lot of space in there, which to me equals potential, but still a lot of work to be done, not least out here in the back garden. But let's see who fancied it when it went under the hammer. Can I say 95 to start? Got to be the other thing. 95 bid, thank you. 95,000 pounds. 100 can I see now? Surprisingly, the bidding took time to get going, but climbed in thousand pound steps. We rejoin at 110,000 pounds. In the aisle at 110,000 pounds. Another 500 anywhere else. 110 and a half. No, at 110, 500, the other side of the aisle, 111 anywhere else. If not, 110, 500 once, 110, 500 twice. Third and final time, 110,500 pounds. You bought it, sir, well done. That successful bid of 110 and a half thousand pounds came from father and son team, Ian and Cameron. Motor enthusiast Ian is a first-time renovator. He's preparing to retire from the oil industry. So I got my motor running and met him back at the property to find out his plans. Ian, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Congratulations as well, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. What was it that attracted you to not just the house but the area as well? Well, we live locally and uh, my son's done a little bit of research, you know, so... Uh... He kind of uh, spotted this one that was coming up uh, on the auction. I was uh, quite happy with uh, going for it, as you so, can so, so it's all about it's all about your son then. He's you? 19. Yeah. He's uh, a big strapping lad. So uh, hopefully he'll get torn into that garden as soon as we uh, get uh, you know settled in and get uh, get busy with it. Uh, he's due back from holiday today, so. Uh, so is it is it is it Cameron that's behind you guys getting into the property? Was it his idea or your idea? It's more Cameron's push. Yes, okay. I'll be honest with you. It is more Cameron's push, and uh, uh, with me working away in the oil industry, okay. and the oil industry is on a bit of a downturn at the moment. We wanted a bit of diversity. Uh, I do two weeks away on the rig. I have two weeks free time, so I can really get tore into okay. the property. So this is one of maybe a couple that we're hoping to do in this year, next year. Have you got people to help you out with well, that? Well, I'm fairly handy myself. Okay. And, uh, and part of this DIY is to pass on the DIY to my son, you know. Okay. Um, well, there's previously working on our own home. We've certainly know some good tradesmen locally, so we'll be getting the, the experts in for the expert bits. Yeah, of course. To, the safeties you know, the, of... The safety, yes, the electrical and obviously the gas, etc. Yeah. It's not it's not a bad start. It's, it's a, it seems to be uh, quite a solid property. Yes. You've got a yes. bit of space yes. out the front as well. We've got the opportunity for off-road parking. So we're certainly looking at that because uh, there's, you know, there's a substantial plot out the front there. Inside, it's a, it's a bit of a strange configuration, isn't it? It is. It is slightly, <laughs> yes. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to change it at all? Or are you going to keep it as it is? Just give us a bit more detail what you're going to do. Well, starting in the wet room, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we want to make that a utility and, yep. you know, we, we want to certainly uh, uh, retain the toilet, mm -hmm. uh, move the toilet over and stud wall it out and, uh, you know, obviously have that separate. 
Uh, the kitchen, we've been a, a fair size, we're hoping to look more towards maybe removing the chimney breast here. Uh, equally, uh, with the, you know, the two rooms downstairs, we're just going to retain them as they are yeah. at the moment. And the bedrooms upstairs are of a good size. Ian and Cameron have set themselves a time scale of two to three months and a budget of seven to ten thousand pounds. Based on the agent's valuations, this should give them a decent profit if they decide to sell, but they haven't made their minds up yet. Either way, hard work will be required to keep them on budget. And will you, will you, do you see yourself, you and you and uh, Cameron coming here in the morning and getting mucked in? And uh, I'm you? hoping so. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, see, well, he does a 12-hour shift now at his local uh, firm that he works for, so okay. uh, he'll be used to that, and uh, so uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a good 12-hour shift out of him, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, that's for sure. <laughs> I've got lots of promises, so we'll see if we're getting tore into it. So good luck, sir. Well, thank you, Dion. Sounds yes. like a very sound partnership. Well, I hope so, yes. It's your best. Many. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. It's good to hear that Ian's done his research. Or should I rephrase that and say, it's good to hear that Cameron, his son, has done his research for him. But between them, I've got to say, they've found themselves a decent first project. Now, Ian's willing to get stuck in, get his hands dirty, and get this project sorted. Will Cameron do the same? You can find out later in the programme. Lucy's in Gillingham in Kent, a bustling modern town with great shops, a university and good rail links to London and Dover. But things weren't always so peaceful. Back in 1667, this town was the site of one of the worst defeats in Royal Navy history. Now, during the Second Anglo-Dutch War, a Dutch fleet sailed up the River Medway, attacked forts, burned English battleships, and basically invaded Chatham and Gillingham. It became known as the Raid on the River Medway. Fortunately, the Dutch didn't stay long, and Gillingham is now still very much part of Kent, not Holland. So, I'm going to now go and check out some property. Well, I'm just quarter of a mile from the high street, and here's the property that went to auction. Now, it's a two-bedroom mid-terrace, and it had a guide price of 120 to 125,000 pounds. Oh, that front garden has seen better days. Still onwards, and uh, it looks like upwards. Oh, two huge steps outside before you even get in the door. So that's something people with buggies and the elderly might want to think about. But once you're inside, it's um, it's not quite as I expected. I have seen so many of these terrace houses before, and usually the stairs go up this way. But already somebody's been in and they've turned the stairs around to allow for more space upstairs, I'm sure. So I don't think the stairs originally would have been here, which is quite interesting, but it does make it work really well in here. As you can see, a bit dated. You've got textured ceilings up there, lots of different colour paint. But through this room, that is where the stairs would originally have gone, all the way up and then the two rooms either side. And then through here is the second reception reception room again very similar to the first textured ceilings a bit dated you have got central heating in here though which is a good thing but enough space to maybe have your dining table but something else that again is bothering me a little bit it's the different levels the kitchen is down here but again it's two big steps down just like it was coming through the front door bit of a small kitchen definitely could do with upgrading and a bit of a shabby lean-to outside I'm going to take a look you gotta step it up and go. Well, you can't stand back. You gotta step it up and go. Yeah, I'm a regular, a dodgy lean to. It will need to be demolished or replaced. As for the garden, well, what can I say? It's small, paved, and needs new fencing. Time for Lucy to head back inside and upstairs. So, upstairs, well, let's have a look just as I expected. Now, I mentioned downstairs that the stairs had been turned to create more space, and upstairs is where it really does work a treat. Now, originally, this wall here 
partition would not have been here. This would have been one big bedroom and you would have had to have walked through the big bedroom to another big bedroom right at the end. But now they've moved the bathroom up at the end. They've created a partition here. It does make the second bedroom so much smaller, but it allows independent access through into the now bathroom. And I think it really works. I think the layout is perfect. In fact, I don't think I would change a thing up here. Losing a bedroom may sound like a bad idea, but if it helps a property flow better, then it can be the way to go. So at a guide price of between 120 and 125,000, could this potentially make a good return for an investor? We asked an agent with knowledge about this area for his opinion. This probably needs a complete uh, redecoration, refurbishment, new kitchen, new bathroom, and that's about it, really. I wouldn't alter the layout at all. I don't think it would be cost effective. I think it's a, it's a house and it's fine as it is. Agreed, but what type of budget does the agent think buyers may need to refurbish the house? I would estimate a refurbishment sort of budget of about 15,000 would probably cover it. OK, taking the top end of the guide price at 125 grand and the agent's figure of 15,000 for refurbishment would mean a potential investment of 140,000. So what could it sell for? If I was asked to market this probably, I would probably list it at 170,000 pound. This two-bed terrace doesn't need too much work. In fact, quite a lot of the work has already been done for you. Although it's tired, it's dated, it needs a new kitchen and bathroom and certainly some redecoration. But it could be completely transformed. So let's find out who fancied taking this terrace on when we head to auction. 120, 125 for guides. Start me at 120. Should be hands shooting up everywhere. 120,000 pounds. Start me at 110 then. Get me on the way. 110,000 pounds. I'm on the way at the back at 110. At 110. And 112. 112 I've got. And 14. 114. And 16. 116. I've got 116 on the left. 118 now. 118 and 120 if you like. 120 if you like. 120 I have. And 2. 122. It's back to you again. 122. At £120,000 and bid 122, I'm looking for. Sorry, right by the door, 122. And four is against you, 124. And six, and eight, and 28. At 126 standing, 128 is against everybody else. At £126,000, then for the first time, 128, right over on the back corner, at opposites, 128, 130. And two, 132. Back to you, sir, at £130,000. For the first time then at 130, for the second time at 130, if you're sure you're all done at 130,000 pounds, with your standing on the left hand side all done, sure's at 130,000 pounds. The winning bid of 130,000 was made by Prakash on behalf of himself and long term friend Man. Originally from Nepal, this is to be their first venture into property development. Lucy met them to find out more. Guys, congratulations. Lovely to meet you, Prakash. Thank you, Lucy. Man. Thank you. So what's the story behind you two buying this? We are the ex-soldiers. You're ex-soldiers? Yes, yes ex-soldiers. Royal engineers, Queen Gurkha engineers. Gurkhas? Yeah, in the Gurkhas. Amazing. Uh, thank you. And we thought, why don't we try in the new venture? So how different is this to being in the army? Uh, while we're in the army, we did uh, lots of construction uh, jobs like this. But when we left the army, and he's doing electrician, and I was gas engineer. An electrician and a gas engineer. Yes. Yeah. So handy. I mean, so incredibly handy to have those type of skills in this industry. So they may be doing this for the first time, but these ex Gurkhas have skills that are invaluable and will get them off to a great start. To give them a bit of encouragement, we're playing their home country's national anthem, Nepal. But they and their respective families have a good knowledge of Gillingham gained after the army posted them here. So what is the plan and why have you bought this? Uh, new business, new venture. Maybe I know we could do the business in the properties in the future. 
But is this for you yeah. to live in or is this yeah. for you no, to still... add value and sell on? Add value and sell it. When, yeah, we are when planning to. Everything. So, I mean, you certainly can add some value to this property. Yes. Yes. Interestingly, I have seen so many houses like this in my time, mm. but to see it where the stairs have already been turned around, That's right. because originally you'd have gone up the stairs that yeah. way, but they've already turned the stairs to create the corridor upstairs to allow you independent access into the bathroom. Yes. So that job has been done for you. Yep. Because otherwise you'd have had a much bigger second bedroom, That's right. but no independent access into the bathroom. So quite a lot of that work has been done. How do you feel about that? We, we are quite happy. It mm. saved a couple of grand. Saved you, <laughs> saved you yeah. a bit more than a couple of grand. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So yeah. that job's done and dusted. I mean, obviously, completely it needs a new, uh, you know, everything, windows, yeah. doors, floors. Are you two going to be doing a lot of the work here yourselves? Yes. Yes. We will do gas boilers, in. gas, electric, water, these things. And maybe we will do the DIY stuff as well. But if we get what we are looking for, the price-wise, yeah. we will give to the builders. So what is your budget? How much have you got, man? We're looking about under 10 to 15 grand. 10 to 15 thousand pounds to yes. do the whole All, house? Yes, 10 to 15, yeah. I mean, what's your ultimate price you'd like to sell this on for? We are not planning the uh, winner. It's must that we can make it, yeah. I know. We will learn more things than we make the money in, I know, from this, this property. We are planning about uh, 160, okay, so 155, this, yeah, 160. So this for you guys is more about the learning process. Yes. yes, it is. Coming on board, seeing where you go wrong. Yeah. That's right. Trying to source materials and, right. and just seeing how it, how it goes. That's how it is. goes, yeah. How long is it going to take you, do you think? About six, six to, to 12, 12, hours, 12 weeks. weeks. Six to 12 weeks? Yeah. When do you plan on starting? Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Not really? Yeah. No. yeah. So Maybe six to 12 weeks, you're going to get in here yeah. and then do the work and yes. get out yeah. and then put it up for sale? Yes. Good luck with this, for your first Thank project you. together. Thank Lovely you. Lovely meeting you both. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Former soldiers Prakash and Mann have decided to use their skills they've acquired in their day jobs as a gas engineer and an electrician and start property developing together. Now, this is their first auction purchase and I don't think they've done badly. It's in a central location, it doesn't need too much work and a lot of that, well, they can do themselves. We'll find out how the duo get along and will they stick to their six to 12 week timescale? Join me later in the programme. Coming up, this three-bed semi in Sheffield's retro stonework doesn't impress. A fireplace, a little bit more 2016 would be nice. And it's an unregimented work life in Gillingham. In the army, you will have always a bus. In here, you have a bus for yourself. Back now to Stafford in the West Midlands. It was here I looked around this good-sized semi-detached property which had three bedrooms and an attractive guide price of 105 grand. Inside it was dated and tired, but packed with potential, although I had my concerns about managing those purse strings. I think you'd have to spend maybe eight, ten thousand pounds on this house just to get it right, and that takes your costs to maybe 113, 115,000 pounds. That's if you got it at the guide price. Now, I think if you're taking on a project like this, especially this one, you would have to watch your budget. Go easy. Yes, there was a ceiling price in the area, but with a guide price of 105 grand, it could be a sound investment in the right hands. 100,000 pounds, 101, 102. Surprisingly, this house went for five and a half thousand pounds over the guide price. Ian, an oil rig worker, and son Cameron, an engineer apprentice, bagged themselves what seemed like a good deal. You bought it, sir. Well done. Bought for one hundred and ten and a half thousand pounds. This property purchase was a new venture for Ian and his family. 
Is it Cameron that's behind you guys getting into the property? Was it his idea or your idea? It's more Cameron's push, yes, okay. to be honest with you. It is more Cameron's push, and uh, uh, I do two weeks away on the rig. I have two weeks free time, so I can really get tore into okay. the property with that two weeks free time. So this is one of maybe a couple that we're hoping to do in this year, next year. So Ian and 19-year-old son Cameron hope to get this property up and running in two to three months and for a budget of around seven and a half to ten grand. We're back ten months later and straight away we can see they have created parking spots for at least two cars. Very wise decision. But does the good work continue on the inside? space is now full of light and feeling fresh thanks to a lovely subtle color scheme and excellent carpeting i can't wait to see what they've done with that kitchen well it's brand new and modern like the rest of the property it's been rewired throughout but what became of that wet room Well, the wet room originally was uh, all one size there. It had uh, the, the toilet and the big wet room. So me and Cameron just decided, right, we'd put a new stud wall in there, retain the wet room facility, you know, having the, the extra shower for a family downstairs, but we needed uh, the utility for the washing machine and dryer. So uh, we decided uh, that would be the, the best way forward for that one, build the stud wall, and uh, just uh, that's the end result, and we're quite happy with that. It's good practical thinking by those novice renovators, and those good decisions continue upstairs. All three bedrooms have been skimmed and redecorated to a really high standard. The bathroom suite is brand new and a huge improvement. Outside, the garden is no longer a jungle and they've created a patio area just off the French doors. As first renovation projects go, Ian and his family have done an incredible job, but it has come with some challenges. Well, uh, when we first got the property, we'd uh, uh, kind of had a good uh, look around it, started to rip the carpets up and everything, and realised that uh, we had what we call red ash. Realised that we had to dig all the uh, all of the concrete out and all of the uh, red ash out. We were on about 60 to 70 tonnes. So that's every floor downstairs had to be uh, removed. So uh, basically we got the impact gun and took the concrete out and then we had to physically wheelbarrow it all out and pickaxe it all out and uh, so that was time consuming so that was uh, one that we hadn't planned for red ash is a type of material that contains sulfate and was commonly used between the 1940s and the 1970s as infill under concrete flooring unfortunately because the sulfate reacts to any damp it can rise up and crack the concrete, which affects the property's brickwork. The only way to deal with it is to dig it all out. So I'm guessing that seven to ten thousand pounds has flown out of those double glazed windows. Obviously, with uh, the red ash being the, the main problem, all of the kitchen had to be destroyed. Uh, pretty much start again there. So uh, budget went to, through to about just over fifteen thousand. What a learning curve from the red ash curveball. It's not being all work and no play, though. A family celebration and holiday have helped stretch that three-month timescale to nine months. But let's find out what two local agents think, starting with the one who saw it before. It's a truly magnificent change, absolutely wonderful. Um, from the first time I came here, lots have been, uh, has been done, lots of refurbs, looking great, neutral throughout, wonderful carpets. They've done a grand job. First impressions of the property are that it's been uh, well turned out, it's nice and fresh, and it would make uh, lovely family accommodation. 
it's essential that this red ash was eradicated. Um, there's not going to be any problems now with mortgaging the property. That's good news, but let's get into the numbers now. Ian has invested a total of £125,500, but isn't sure whether to sell or rent. So will the valuations help him decide? On the resale market, I would envisage the property being in the region of a £150,000 to £155,000. Or if the property is uh, rented out, then I would envisage a rental of £650 per calendar month. I think to resell this property on the open market, we would achieve between £165,000 and £170,000. And for rental, between £650,000 and £675 per calendar month. Quite a big difference in sales valuations there. But if Ian did get that top value of 170 grand, that would mean a pre-tax profit of a whopping 44 and a half thousand pounds. And if they decided to rent, that top rental figure of 675 pound per calendar month would mean a yield of just under six and a half percent. So does Ian have a difficult decision to make? We'll sit down as a family, discuss the way forward on that one, and uh, certainly. Uh... Uh, take a vote, but uh, I think personally, I think we're all edging towards renting it out at, at this stage. The city of Sheffield in South Yorkshire is synonymous with steel production. It's been making it since the 14th century. Many countries claim to have invented stainless steel. Like lots of great inventions, the origins are disputed. But Sheffield celebrates its own Harry Brearley with this locally produced stainless steel sculpture called Cutting Edge, which proudly stands in front of the railway station. Well, a bit like Rome, Sheffield was built on seven hills. Uh, luckily, the property I'm here to see isn't going to cost you three million shekels and a camel. It is £45,000, which seems like a pretty good deal for a three-bedroom, semi-detached. In this elevated position, let's have a look. Now, just before you write in, I know there is a dispute about the Seven Hills thing and that some people regard it as a bit of a myth, but there is no disputing that this property sits on a hill. Slightly puffed out after that hike to the front door, but the elevated position is, yeah, a lot of people like that. A lot of storage underneath, which is good news. So through the front door, you've got the little entrance area there, stairs up to your bedrooms, and then into um, well, basically the, the main room, in fact, the only room apart from the kitchen on the downstairs floor. Um, it, it's a good size, very high ceilings, which is nice. Uh, it's obviously a little bit dated, the colour scheme won't suit everyone. Um, a fireplace, a little bit more 2016 would be nice. Uh, that's a little bit uh, 80s, 90s, isn't it? But, uh, but you know, you could have some feature there, an open fire or whatever. But let's explore through this little area here, which is a nice place to dump your bags and your bikes or whatever, uh, and into the kitchen. Now, again, it's, it's very of an ilk, isn't it, of this kind of property? But again, I really like the high ceilings. That, that's a real bonus. Um, I wonder if uh, <laughs> potential purchasers of new Cloud Cuckoo Land? No, I think not. I think this is a really great property. But that is a little bit random. What on earth do you think's out there? Mariana Trench? Oh well, wish me luck. <laughs> Uh, as far as I can see so far, it's a pretty normal back area. Um, uh, you've got a nice garden there, uh, stretching quite a long way up, as you might have imagined. Ah. Right. That's the deep water, then. How deep is this little pond? Mine boggles. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Never can be too careful with water. Yes, joking aside, even shallow ponds like this can present a danger to small children. Between 1995 and 2005, 28 children drowned in ornamental ponds. So best cover it, fence it or fill it in. 
Really good use of space at a staircase like this because you get basically up uh, the considerable height because as I said, the ceilings are very high in this place in a relatively small amount of room, which does give lots of space. You've got three bedrooms, which is good news. A bathroom here. Bit of a disappointment though, it doesn't actually have a bath in it. It's got a shower, so I wonder if there's a bit of careful uh, modifications there you could do to get a bath in there because most people do actually still like a bath. Um, bedroom at the back, half decent size. Smaller box room there. And then through to your master. And as is so classic of properties of this era, the old built in uh, wardrobes with that sort of material. I think it had a special name, didn't it, that all these things were made of in the day. Um, bay window, though, and again, quite a nice sized space. So, uh, all in all, I think a good little house. Well, a medium sized house. Melamine, that's it. Melamine, I knew it would come back to me eventually. Well, wardrobe building material aside, what does a local property expert from the auction house who sold the property think of it? We're in Firth Park of Sheffield, which is the north side of Sheffield. Um, this loca location is close to Sheffield Town Centre, wide range of amenities, good transport links, and very close to the M1. Also, the added benefit of being very close to the Peak District. Peak District, you say? That probably counts for some of those seven hills. But back to the property. First impressions, this property's tired, it's dated, it's, it's stale, it needs a new kitchen, new bathroom, uh, and complete upgrading throughout. Unusually for a house, this property is leasehold. How does he feel about that? Historically, yes, uh, there is a uh, association with uh, leasehold properties with flats, but there are properties out there which do have uh, a, a leasehold. I would certainly look at the legal pack and check uh, how much service charge is, is or ground rent is applicable. My view would be that it would be probably a nominal amount per annum. But it turns out your view is spot on. The ground rent is £2.50 a year and there's no service charge. So would this make a good rental property? With regards to renting the property out, you're looking within the region of 500 to 550 pounds per calendar month. With a guide price of 45,000 pounds plus refurbishment costs, would there be much headroom for a profit on sale? Once the property is renovated and fully refurbished, you're looking within the region of 90 to 100,000 pounds. Well, joking and larking about aside, this is a good little house and for a very attractive guide price. So let's see who fancied it when it went under the hammer. Lot 29. Start me where you will on that one. 48 to start me. 45, three bedroomed house at 45,000. Doesn't sound dear to me. 40, 45, thank you. 45 I've got as a starting bid at 45,000 pounds. 46 somewhere else. 45 is my opening bid. 46. 46, 47. 48 is bid. 48, 49 at 49,000 pounds. 50. 50. Bidding was intense, not just in the room, but on the phone also. We rejoin at 55,000. 55,000, 56, 56, 57, 56 and a half, 57 on the phone, 57 and a half, 58. Two bidders then push the property up to 60,000, where we rejoin. At 60, 500 quickly. Yes, 60 and a half. 60,500 is the bid. 60,500 pounds, 61. 61,000 pounds for the first time. For the second time, 61,5. 61,5, 62. 62, 62,000 once, twice, third time. Sold on the phone at 62,000, thank you. That phone bidder getting the property for 62 grand was Sajid. He currently has two other rental properties, and he does this as a hobby. Sajid, great to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, listen, we didn't see you at the auction, did we, there? No. When I spoke to auctioneers, they said, well, you know, if you can't attend, we do a telephone bid. Was that your first time you'd done that, was it? It, it was the first time I've bidded over the telephone to right. purchase a property at auction. And how was it? I think it was uh, it was great, um, and I thought, yeah, let's uh, let's go in. Just going to go for it. Brilliant. Um, before we talk about the property, tell me about you. What do you do? I'm a lecturer. Oh, great. Um, I'm a lecturer at the University of Sheffield. Oh, brilliant. Um, in uh, accounting and uh, business studies. Okay. 
So the numbers on this have got to be spot on, haven't they? Let's be honest. I think I've got to get my budget right. You get it wrong, yeah. but your students are just going to so take the mickey out of you. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, initially when I saw the house uh, be before the auction, um, you know, normally they're derelict or they need a lot of work doing. Um, my interest in this property was purely because there's not a lot of work that needs doing. So what was it then uh, about this house, other than the fact that it didn't need a lot of work necessarily doing to it? What, what, um, what did you like about it? Um, a number of factors. I think location. Um, I think that was one of the prime factors. Um, hospital is just behind the, you know, it's in parallel. Uh, the, one of the largest hospitals in Sheffield. Um, so easily lettable as well. Um, and probably easily t to, sell on, to sell on as well and make, right. a, make a nice little gain. So tell me what you're planning to do to it then. Um, I think I'm going to... Cosmetic improvements. Um, Get rid of the colour scheme, yeah? Yeah, yeah colour scheme. I mean, in, in this particular room, we've got a number of colours. Um, and just make it more modern, mm -hmm. the modern touch. Mm -hmm. um, in the kitchen, probably going to modernise that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and probably, you know, just cosmetic deco. Right. Um, the garden, um, probably get garden um, cleared. Um, there's a pond there. Look at the pond, look, see what he's doing. Um, and just, you know, upgrade it, basically. Right. And I do hope that Sajid's modernisation programme extends to the fireplace. And also, who's going to do the work? Some of the work I do myself. Um, where I can, yeah. Um, but like where you've got the plumbing work, where you've got the you know, plumbing electrics, yeah, I'll get the proper professionals in. Okay. Get them to do so that. what's the budget? I mean, budget on this, and like, like we mentioned, I've got, I've got to be right on this. Aren't you I? so have. <laughs> I think twenty budget... three decimal points. <laughs> My budget on this would be probably uh, no more than four grand. Four, let's do round, I want more, I want to read. 4,637 4, pounds <laughs> and 27 I'd, pence. I'd, I'd, I'd probably say around 4,500 <laughs> would be my budget on, on modernising this, right. bringing it up to standard. OK, yeah, fine. Um, and then from there, whether I decide to let it out or whether to sell it, um, I'm not sure yet. Not sure. But I'll be in, it'll be interesting to know what the agents say. So what kind of profit would tempt you to sell? Um, ten. Ten grand. If there's ten grand in it, then you'd just move it on and, oh, and, yeah. and do that. Otherwise, you can rent it out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the hospital's local. Mm. Um, there's plenty of you know, professionals there that are looking mm. for accommodation around here. So um, the time scale for everything? Um, probably within, probably I'm looking at two months. Two months. At university, though, you, you lecture in business studies, is that right? I lecture in accounting and uh, business studies. Accounting and business studies. So, I mean, what do you think about property developing as a business? I wouldn't say I'd, I'd, be, I'd become a property developer, um, but it is, a, it is, like, on side, an interest um, that keeps me busy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's another way, you know, to either make a long-term investment or a quick capital gain. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, listen, congratulations. Thank you. And well done. Thank you. Look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, a telephone bid from Sajid secures the property. Will his £4,500 budget secure a very pleasant renovation? Well, you can find out later in the show. Well, we've seen how one of today's properties turned out, but what about the other two? Yes, have these projects gone to plan? Yeah, I think it's time we found out. We're back now to Gillingham in Kent, where Lucy looked around this two-bedroom mid-terrace, which was up at auction for a guide price of 120 to 125,000. The good news was that the previous owner had done some valuable work. I have seen so many of these terrace houses before, and usually the stairs go up this way, but already somebody's been in and they've turned the stairs around to allow for more space upstairs, I'm sure. This is always a clever plan because it creates independent access to two of the bedrooms, one of which can then be turned into a family bathroom, which had also been done probably in the 80s, judging by the colour of the suite. The property was also sold with a gas central heating system, but there was still plenty of work left for the new purchasers. Retired Gurkhas, Prakash and Mann paid 130 grand for their first venture together, and they certainly had some valuable skills. An electrician and a gas engineer. Yeah. 
so handy, I mean, so incredibly handy to have those type of skills in this industry. They were confident in their specialist trades, but were on a steep learning curve when it came to the more amateur side of things. And maybe we will do the DIY stuff as well. So this for you guys is more about the learning Lovely. process. Yes, it is. Coming on board, seeing where you go wrong. That's right. Just seeing how it, how it goes. That's how it is. goes, yeah. To find out how it went, we're back just 34 days later, well ahead of the 8 to 12 week forecast. That should bolster Prakash and Man's faith in their own abilities. Neutral tiling and a new white bathroom suite modernise this space completely. Downstairs in the lounge, the neutral tones continue. The same can be said for the rear reception room and the new kitchen has a much improved layout. It took some rearranging, but Prakash is only too happy to explain their strategy. We started from door was here, and we blocked the door, and then we lay out this lovely, nice, functional kitchen here. We moved that basin towards there, hops towards a little bit, tile, ceiling, new radiators, everything we did here and it's lovely now. Unfortunately, the old boiler was beyond repair, so the skills of gas engineer man came into play, while Prakash's skill set helped sort out the house's other energy source. The lean-to has been spruced up and neutral carpeting gives a flow upstairs and throughout the bedrooms. The majority of the ceilings have been replaced with new plasterboard and skimmed, and it was whilst working with this new material that a new unexpected discovery came to light. When we cut the plasterboard there, and we found the, I know, yeah. it's the lovely cellar there, it didn't we? Yes. Yeah, it did. The guys have certainly come a long way up the refurbishment learning curve. A steep journey, a bit like those cellar steps. So, how does it feel? I didn't expect we can at least this house in three weeks, but it's finished. No, we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. You certainly did do it, and a very nice job it is too. So, will there be more in the pipeline? This is our beginning. We have to go it's still more properties to do it. And Still, we are working together. A formidable team, just as they were in their former jobs. There are still some finishing touches to do, like the car park at the front, but leaving that aside, how did the 10 to £15,000 budget fare? We spent about just over 11000 Just over 11000 Excellent. Time to stand at ease now, boys, as we call in not one but two local estate agents to establish the value that's been added here. First on parade, the agent who did the reconnaissance just last month before battle commenced. I think the changes are really good and the speed has impressed me as well. To get to this stage in four weeks is quite amazing. I think the property is very nice, it's a nice sized property and I feel the new owners have come in and done a really good job. Um, it's all decorated nice and neutrally and I feel it would attract a wide range of buyers. The boys' work has passed the professional inspection. Prakash and the man's intention was always to sell on, to recoup capital and get another property to do up. But if the order of the day was to rent out, what rental could they achieve? I feel this property could achieve um, on the rental market between £800 and £825 per calendar month. I think the rental value of this property is approximately £850 per calendar month. Which, if fully let, means the chaps could realise around a 7% yield. That's good, but probably we'll go for sale, isn't it? Yeah, we'll go for sale. 
Adding their refurbishment spend to their purchase price, you get just over £141,000. So, what's it worth now? I feel this property will achieve between £170,000 and £180,000 on the open market. I think this property would sell for approximately £175,000. Taking the top figure, that's a potential profit before taxes and expenses of £39,000. Does that meet muster, chaps? So, please that's get the valuation. That's yeah. the best place and good news for us. We worked so tirelessly, hardly three weeks, and you are just getting there on the way. Well, the hard work has certainly paid off. So, what's been the biggest contrast between the old and new careers? In the army, we will have always boss. In here, you are the boss for yourself. That's the thing. That's the we like it. Yeah. Back to Sheffield now to see what progress Sajid has made with his three-bed semi. Sajid is a university lecturer in accounting and business studies, and he paid £62,000. With that background, surely he would be watching the pennies. So what's the budget? I mean, put you on this, and like, like we mentioned, I've got, I've got to be right on this, aren't I? You so have. <laughs> I think we you... three decimal points. <laughs> My budget on this would be probably uh, no more than four grand. Four grand? That's round. I want more. £4,637.27. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd probably say around £4,500 <laughs> would be my budget on, on modernising this, right. bringing it up to standard. OK. Yeah. Fine. Um, and then from there, whether I decide to let it out or whether to sell it, um, I'm not sure yet. He thought it would take two months, which was generous, given there wasn't really too much to do. Just one month later, we're back. Uh, got the walls all painted, um, painted white, got the ceiling painted as well, and the doors as well, um, to give it, give it that extra modern, modern touch. Oh, well, we could go down the conventional route and find a piece of music about paint. I know what I like, and I like emotion. Music is the sound of paint, just paint and paint, paint, paint. But that's probably going to be about as entertaining as well. Look at watching paint dry. So instead, here's a new game. Let's play... Before or after. I'll give you an easy one to start. Were these shots of the bathroom taken before or after the renovation? Yes, that's right, they're after. Remember the telltale clues of stickers warning not to use the units. Sajid had his plumber sort out the bathroom and check the boiler while he was at it. Now, a slightly trickier one. Are these shots of the lounge taken before or after Sajid's extra modern touch? Well, they were after, because before there was dark red paint before the dado rail, and taking away the chimney breast would have involved building regulations. Getting the hang of it? Now to the kitchen. Is this how you remember it from four weeks ago? Well, does it look new to you? It should do. These are actual refurbishment shots. This is how it looked before. Subtle, that one. But the absence of the sticky tape was the giveaway. Upstairs, there are more obvious clues, like the bed. And the powder blue wall. They were before. The contrast is clear. As for the other bedrooms, well, they speak for themselves. Outside, the before looks marginally safer than the after. But Sajid has got gardeners coming back to finish it off. So, what's his overall impression of the work? It's got the modern touch now. Um, it's, it's more in a sellable condition. Um, for first-time buyers or whoever wants to pay, but if I decided to sell it, or even if I decided to rent it, I think it's more presentable now than it was before. Clearly, there is no more painting needed, but are all the jobs completed? Internally, I've got the extractor fan that's going to be fitted um, where the gas cooker is in the kitchen. And I've got the upstairs uh, bedroom, front bedroom, where the carpenter is coming 
um, to sort out the carpet because it's a bit uneven. Plus, there is a new kitchen window on order. So, how is the budget? My initial budget was 4,500. Um, around 4,500 to get it renovated. Um, at that time, uh, that included probably changing the kitchen and the fireplace. Um, but then I thought, well, hang on, I don't really need to go that far yet. Um, so my cost so far has been approximately 1,500 I've come in at. Your students will be proud, and with his business studies hat on, Sajid is waiting for the valuations before deciding whether to rent or sell. So it's time to help him out with that. Two local property agents came along to give us their thoughts. My first impressions are that it's a good-sized property with lots of space, versatile accommodation, but the finish isn't great. More could have been made of it. I think the selling points to the property are that it's a good-sized three-bedroom, semi-detached property, and it's close to good local amenities and Northern General Hospital. Being close to large employers like hospitals and universities is always good for rental purposes. Sajid paid 62 grand at auction with a further 1,500 pounds on repainting and uh, hmm, refurbishing. So once the experts give us the rental forecast, we can all work out Sajid's potential yield. If I were looking to offer this property to the rental market, I would anticipate a monthly rent being achieved of somewhere in the region of £500 per calendar month. For rental valuation, I would expect it to achieve around £525 per calendar month. I'm certain Sajid's accountancy students will have done the mental arithmetic and concluded that taking the top rental figure equates to a yield of just over 10%. And people say accountancy is boring. No, no, no. That's a great return. Um, I mean, I've only had it for four weeks. I've had people knocking on the door. Um, I've had people from uh, the hospital, uh, which is which is quite local, um, calling me as well. Could his sixty-three and a half thousand pound investment have gained any value in that short time? I would expect the property to achieve around eighty thousand pounds. If I were looking to put this property on the market, I would anticipate a sale being achieved somewhere in the region of £85,000. A massive potential pre-tax profit of £21,500. Most of it achieved in just one month. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, in a matter of four weeks, a nice uh, capital gain. <laughs> no, you can't gloss over that. But since filming, Sajid has rented out the house at £550 a month and he has replaced the washing machine. Ever the business lecturing professional, he'd like to point out to any potential novice developers to pay attention to the legal pack and, in particular, the matter of the other party's solicitor's fees. A lot of agents now selling at auctions are putting in 1% of uh, you know of the fees which we end up paying um it could be greater than that it depends which auction you go to so just be 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 careful and my tip be thorough with your rubbing down and buy a good quality undercoat If you are thinking of heading down to an auction, I hope we've been of some help. Yes, well, we try to offer as much advice as we possibly can, and there's plenty more where that came from. Yeah, so make sure you join us next time for more Homes Under the Hammer. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.